Hi everyone, happy February. It is Groundhog Day and it is also the start of National Embroidery Month. Technically the start was yesterday, but since I'm joining you here today, we will kick it off today together. National Embroidery Month is truly a, a month of holidays around here at Sulky because we absolutely love all things embroidery. So today I'm going to be talking about hand embroidery and machine embroidery, some fun things to uh, tune in for during the month of February here at Sulky, and I will be talking about beginner techniques, intermediate techniques, and advanced techniques. And I have kind of summarized what I'm going to be talking about today in the blog post that I linked to in the description of today's post. So in the description, click on the little see more button and you will see the very long post that has everything that I'm going to be talking about today. All the links you need to click on over for more information and the full blog post. Now, I will also mention today, I am not using my microphone because last week I had a little bit of problems with it. So if you're having trouble hearing me today, let me know and I will use my microphone. But if you're hearing everything fine, give me a thumbs up or a heart or something and let me know so we can just move forward with the audio as is. As you can see, I have also decorated for Valentine's Day. I know, I'm finally getting around <laughs> to decorating down here. I moved my studio down into my basement last year, and I, I mean, it takes me a while to get things going here. So <laughs> I've got this lovely heart quilt, some other quilts over here, and all the tutorials for these you will find at the Sulky blog or on the Sulky free projects page. If you go to sulky.com, you can navigate really easily over to the blog or to our resources page, which houses all of our free projects. So you can grab the patterns and tutorials for these lovely things. All right, so um, first off, since it is National Embroidery Month, I want you all to know about our fantastic sale we have going on right now. 25% off rayon threads, 30% off original metallics and selected stabilizers. So I'll be talking about some of this stuff today, um, but I just wanted you to know that this sale is going on until February 8th at midnight, so you have some time, but I will say some things are going fast. So if it is a a thread pack or a stabilizer bundle that you have your eye on, um, I highly suggest grabbing it up right now while it's on sale and making sure that you get it before it is out of stock and we've got to, you know, wait a little while for it to get back in stock. Okay, so I appreciate all of you uh, coming in with your comments already, if you have questions about embroidery, whether it is handwork or machine embroidery, be sure to put your questions in the comments of the post. I see everything as it's coming in so I can address it. We will have some Q&A blocks throughout today. So sit back, relax, we'll get your questions answered, and uh, we'll start talking about some fun embroidery stuff. So also, as you know, we have a great giveaway on the days that we do our fun Facebook Live events. Today's giveaway is a very unique tool. Now, I didn't really understand what this tool was, and it was at sulky.com. And I said, oh my gosh, is this one of our tools? Turns out, um, you can't really find this many places other than sulky.com. It is an embroiderer's toolkit, okay? So this is really for machine embroiderers, but you can use these tools on your regular sewing machine. So if you do not have an embroidery capable machine, don't let that sway you. They are still really handy. So basically, this tool is like a very small screwdriver. 
and there are different screwdriver heads to reach. Your throat plate screw, sometimes that screw is a little bit inset and it's kind of hard to get at with the screwdriver that comes with your machine. And if you're anything like me, you have probably lost that screw driver. <laughs> um, you may need that screwdriver for switching out your needles, switching out your presser foot, and accessing you know the nitty gritty parts of your machine so that you can take your face, your throat plate off, and dust in there, um, things like that. So these screwdrivers are super handy for that, and it comes in this neat little case. So. I will be giving one of these away to a lucky viewer today who is commenting, liking, sharing this post, um, otherwise engaging with us today. And I will reach out to the winner after about 24 hours. Sometimes it's a little bit later than that. Um, I try to give everybody a chance uh, to get in on the giveaway over the course of 24 hours. So I will reach out to you via Facebook Messenger if you are the winner of today's little gifty. This is also available at sulky.com. So if you're super interested in this tool, you can grab one today and add it to your cart along with all of the fun sale items that are going on. All right, so speaking of embroidery, so this is a really great hand embroidery project. Now, we did this free webinar a few years ago. This was before my time at Sulky, but I watched it and I really thought it was such a great tutorial. Now, all of our legacy webinars, as we call them, are available on our new education platform. So if you took this webinar in the past and you want to watch it again, you will have to register for our new education platform, which is Sewing Online. Dot sulky dot com. Head over there and create an account. Basically just requires your email address and a password. The reason that we need that information is because now any webinar, videocast, or webcast that you sign up for will go into your personal library on this new platform. That means you don't have to save all of these individual files somewhere on your computer. You can go to your library, access them all there. They will be there, you know, as long as we have this platform. And you will be able to access all of those freebies, those downloads, all of that good stuff. So it's a really great interactive platform. You can shop around for other webcasts and video casts that are coming up, things like that. So I thought this was a great place to start today for the absolute beginner. And it's actually very appealing for any skill level. And you can add the hand embroidery as um, pictured or as uh, demonstrated in the webinar, or you could put machine embroidery on the front of this very easy zipper pouch. Now the zipper pouch is made out of Craftex material. I've talked about this in the past before. It's basically like compressed paper. And what's unique about it is it actually can withstand ironing. It can withstand water. Um, it acts almost like a faux leather, only it's a little bit lighter weight. Like you see here, you can add a zipper to it. You can add um, kind of heavy stitches to it and it won't perforate. So it's a really unique material if you happen to come across some craft techs. However, you can also use any no fray fabric for this. You can use a faux leather for this exact zipper pouch. You can use a, maybe like a felted wool, something like that. Now keep in mind, if you are going to do the hand embroidery as it is, uh, it, demonstrated during this webinar, it does require you to use Sulky Stick and Stitch. Sulky Stick and Stitch is a water soluble stabilizer that you can put through your printer. It comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets so that you can put your design straight on the stabilizer 
through your printer. It is the coolest stuff. Then you stitch through all layers. You, you will stick that stabilizer to the front of your craft text or other material that you choose to use for this zipper pouch. And then you will wash it away once your stitching is complete. So keep in mind, if you are using a fabric that is not going to react well to water or washing, then you will need to use a different embroidery transfer technique. You cannot use that stick and stitch on, let's say, a wool fabric that is not going to react well to water, right? It's going to shrink up on you. So keep that in mind. It needs to be able to withstand water, which is why this craft text is so unique because you can crumple it up in the water and then let it dry. And then it has this cool texture to it um, which is actually just a bunch of wrinkles, but it can end up looking like weathered leather. So it's really, really neat. Um, and again, it makes a cool little pouch like this uh, to hold your sewing supplies or, you know, gift it to someone for Valentine's Day. So grab the tutorial for making this pouch. It's very simple because you honestly do not need a lining. You do not need to turn it right side out through anything. You're basically uh, inserting that zipper and then putting your backing onto it. And I mean, it couldn't be simpler. So like I said, it's a great project for the absolute beginner, but people of other skill levels can really change up that embellishment technique, make it as complicated as you want, add lots of decorative stitches to it, and really have fun with it. You could you could uh, embroider an entire message to someone on there for Valentine's Day. So add that one to your library if you are already on the Sulky Education site um, and watch it at your leisure because it is available on demand at any time as are all of our legacy webinar offerings. And I'm going to be talking about a couple more of those as we go on because, you know, there's no time like the present um, to enjoy virtual or online instruction, right? We can't go to our fabric store and have a lesson. We are missing out on our in-person events where we would go and get in, you know, one-on-one -on -one instruction from experts in the industry. So that is what is so great about Sulky is we have this library of free content as well as um, more in-depth paid content at really, really great prices. I mean, our live video casts, which are live one-on-one -on -one with the instructor, and you could be in your pajamas. We don't care. Come as you are. They are only $5.99 to attend. And also, if you miss the live event, and let's say you want to go back and see our New Year's Eve party event that we did with Sally Tomato, you could purchase that and watch it anytime you wish. And that is a four-hour class with Jessica Barrera of Sally Tomato that you're getting for $5.99. And actually, that's another great embroidery lesson. Um, I did both hand embroidery and machine embroidery on the bag that we did that night. So you'll be getting the best of both worlds. You can kind of get an overview on whichever one of those techniques you are less familiar with and build your skills and add another embroidery kind of technique or um, uh, technique to your sewing education or, you know, your arsenal of techniques that you already have under your belt. All right. So uh, some people are asking about the craft techs. Um, Patricia's asking, can you do the em machine embroidery designs on it? Yes, you can. You can embroider through craft techs as well. I have done it a number of times. You can, um, there's actually a whole blog post about embroidery on craft text um, at blog.sulky.com. And what I recommend is to choose a design that doesn't have a lot of heavy stitch fills, okay? A lot of fill areas where the stitching is really dense. You want to choose a more open work design like that, that name that was really just you know, you use back stitches by hand. Um, line art designs, quilting motifs look really pretty. Um, you could choose a sulky blendable thread and do a quilting motif. 
and that would be really, really pretty on the craft text. So dive into your embroidery design stash and pick something that is really cool. Helen is asking, does craft text come in colors? Yes, it does. There are several different colors. Um, I have some hanging in my sewing room. Um, there's a red, there's a tan, there's a kind of a yellowish beige. Um, there's that white that you saw in the photo. So it does come in different colors. You can find it at CNT Publishing. Um, they actually carry it. And if you just search craft text, you'll be able to find it. We have a craft text book at sulky.com that you can purchase. And it has tons of projects that you can make using that um, material as well. So really unique and just kind of a fun, you know, something new to kind of work on. So, okay, let's get into some more of our hand embroidery for beginners, okay? Actually, before I go to this, because this is kind of more middle of the road, I'm calling that the middle of the roadster because I like to, you know, make it cute, I guess. Um, but since we talked about hand embroidery for the beginner, let's talk about machine embroidery for the beginner. A lot of the times when we do a webinar or webcast, I hear a lot from people that they've had an embroidery machine forever and they only use it for sewing. They're still fearful of starting that machine embroidery journey. It seems so foreign or they just can't wrap around, wrap their heads around this whole stabilizer needle thread recipe that you need for each project that you create. And honestly, I gotta tell you, that's why we're here for you. That is why I have a job, okay? That is because I test out all of these things. I test out all of the different combinations so that when I bring you a blog post or a free project or a webinar, I know what combination of those three things, stabilizer, needle, and thread, are going to work for that project. So you don't have to spend hours trying to figure out that recipe, okay? So really, really take advantage of those resources that you have when you're starting a new project. It just saves so much time. Okay, so for machine embroidery, I put together a video series on our YouTube channel. It's called, very fittingly, Beginner Machine Embroidery. <laughs> and these are what I call little snippet videos, okay? They really give you an overview of these different topics that you need to familiar familiarize yourself with in order to start your journey into machine embroidery. So I'm gonna play you just our little promotional video for the series. And if you're interested in watching more, there are six very short episodes on our YouTube channel. You can head over there and check it out after our live today. I also link to the video series in that blog post that is in the description of today's post. So I will go ahead and play this for you. It's really meant for the absolute beginner, or if it's been a while since you've done machine embroidery, um, or maybe you've done a couple of stitch outs, but there are still some things that trip you up. You know, oh, what needle am I supposed to use with this thread weight, etc. You may find the video series helpful as well. And like I said, they're very short videos. Um, so you won't be sitting around, you know, waiting for the right content to begin for your skill level. So here we go. I'll play the video for you. And then we will be back to talk about some middle of the road projects and resources from Sulky. Machine embroidery is a fun sewing technique that allows you to personalize ready-made and custom sewing projects. It's a simple embellishment to learn once you understand the fundamentals because the machine does most of the work for you. Let's dive into the world of machine embroidery to see just how simple it can be.
So a number of you have been commenting that you are that beginner and you're so happy to have that resource. And a lot of you are saying, you know, once you start machine embroidery, you kind of can't stop because then you realize just how simple it actually is. Um, yes, it can be intimidating to figure out your hoop sizes, um, you know, figure out what types of designs work with what fabrics and for what projects, and to gather those kind of essential supplies that you need to have on hand, because there's nothing worse than picking out a fabric, picking out the design, figuring out what the project's going to be, and then you go to sew it out and you're missing three thread colors. Am I right? So, you know, Sulky makes it really easy. We have a number of beginner kits. We have thread kits that will give you an array of threads to start off with. And like I said, lots of those are on sale right now. 25% off the rayons. Um, rayon is traditionally the thread um, that's used for machine embroidery. Um, it's very strong and shiny um, and just works great with digitized designs. Polydeco is another great choice for machine embroidery threads. If you prefer to work with polyester thread, a lot of um, people who do machine embroidery for quilting uh, prefer polyester threads for whatever reason. Um, so I go into threads, needles, stabilizers, all that good stuff in that video series. So check it out and... Um, you know, if you're a beginner or like I said, somebody returning to machine embroidery or that module has been sitting in your closet ever since you got your sewing machine, break it out. It's National Embroidery Month. There's no time like the present. All right. So back to hand embroidery. Now let's talk about kind of the middle of the roadster. Now this is great for a beginner or someone who maybe has done some hand embroidery, you're kind of familiar with the stitches, um, you know, you've done a project or two in the past, but also, again, great for the beginner because look at all these threads you are getting with this kit. This is our um, rainbow color wheel handwork, hand embroidery kit kind of a long name, so forgive me. Um, but look at all these thread colors you are getting. Now, you might be thinking, hand embroidery, why am I using thread spools? Well, at Sulky, we really recommend using our 12 weight cotton petites thread for hand embroidery. One strand of this thread equals two strands of your traditional embroidery floss. So if you are familiar with working with hand embroidery skeins, which, you know, are big loops and they have those um, kind of gold wrappers around them, and you are familiar with the struggle of having to separate those fibers because your uh, pattern either says use two strands use four strands, use one strand. So you've got to separate all those little fibers, grab a length to work with, and then you inevitably get a tangle or a knot or something that you've got to cut out and basically toss. So if you transition to working with thread on a spool for your hand embroidery projects, you won't have that problem anymore because you just simply wind off what you need and the excess gets stored in the little snap top. Now, every time I show this to someone, they're like, I had no idea Sulky Thread Spools did this. They are called snap spools for a reason because they snap shut. So you can store your thread end in that little top and snap it closed. And now, you don't have all of those tangles. Everything is nice and tidy and you can store it in your little handwork pouch or what have you. So there are so many pluses to working with this thread for hand embroidery. Plus then 
you can go and put this on your sewing machine if you want to sew with a heavyweight thread. So if you want to try, uh, you know, machine quilting, if you want to try decorative top stitching, if you want to even try free motion, you can use a heavyweight 12 weight thread like this in your sewing machine. You just need to make sure you have a needle that has a large enough hole to accommodate the thread, okay? And when you're using a heavyweight thread in the needle, make sure you have a lighter weight thread in the bobbin. You can use sulky bobbin thread, which is very lightweight, and it's going to pr produce a really nice stitch for you, all right? So there are lots of options. You can also use sulky poly light in the bobbin. If you want your bobbin thread to match your top thread, you could choose, you know, this pink in the needle and then a pink poly light and then you'll have a 60 weight thread in the bobbin and it'll produce a nice balanced stitch for you. You don't ever really want to use a heavy weight thread in the bobbin unless you're doing what is called bobbin work, which basically means that you're working upside down. Now, I, I know I'm opening a can of worms here. We will discuss bobbin work at a different date because that is another topic all in itself. But basically you're working upside down so that your bobbin thread is actually gonna be your pretty side when you're complete with your project. So we'll discuss that at a later date. Um, let's see, I've got some questions coming in that I wanna address before I lose them in the feed. Um, is rayon thread considered a polyester thread? No, it is not. Rayon is totally different from polyester. So if you're looking for a polyester thread, you want to choose polydeco if you want a 40 weight uh, thread that is suitable for digitized machine embroidery designs. Um, rayon is its own thing. So... Uh, Another thing I should mention is, you know, not all digitized machine embroidery designs are suitable for 40 weight thread, but most of them are digitized with a 40 weight thread in mind. Okay, so again, opening another can of worms here, but um, just whenever you're buying a machine embroidery design, look at the description and make sure you understand what type or what weight of thread was intended for that design. Because if you are going to buy a design that is intended for heavyweight thread and you use rayon, you're not going to get the coverage in the design like you would if you had used a heavyweight thread. So you really need to be mindful of the description of that design when you're choosing designs to use. Um, for the most part, the built-in designs in your machine, you know, some machines come with you know, 30 built-in designs, some come with hundreds, okay? Um, most of those are gonna be digitized for 40 weight thread. So a rayon or a poly deco is gonna be your choice for that. Okay, so back to this kit for handwork. Like I said, you get all of those pretty sulky 12 weight cotton petites thread, thread spools. You also get a high quality German wooden embroidery hoop. We sell these at sulky.com. If you are used to doing handwork using one of those brittle uh, hand embroidery hoops, um, then you understand why spending a couple more dollars to get a high quality wooden hoop is worth it. Now, not only is it going to be not so brittle or splintery as you're working with it, these are nice and smooth, but also, it retains its shape very well. So if you end up displaying your finished piece in the hoop, which a lot of people do, um, they will leave some excess fabric beyond the hoop and then do a running stitch along the back side and pull it tight so the fabric kind of wraps around the hoop and then you have a nice piece of wall art. If you're doing that, then you wanna make sure that your hoop is going to retain its shape. If you go to do your running stitch and pull it taut and all of a sudden your hoop shrinks up, then your design is going to look puckered along the front. So with this kit, you also get one of those high quality embroidery hoops. You get a piece of fabric and then you get your stick and stitch that I was talking about. The stick and stitch is what you will literally 
stick to the front of your fabric and stitch through. And the pattern for the uh, sampler, this rainbow sampler, is already printed on the stick and stitch for you. So makes a great kit for a beginner to intermediate kind of hand stitcher. Um, you'll also get your hand embroidery key with a lot of stitching references on it. So if you can't remember, how do I make a French knot? Your, your handy little printed guide will show you. So, okay. That is a great handwork kit. Another great handwork kit is this one. This is actually called Hand Embroidery Kit at Sulky.com. And you get six uh, spools of the Sulky Cotton Petites. You also get some needles. You also get some snips. You also get this great little towel to stitch a design onto. So you'll have a totally finished project by the end. And then, again, it comes with your stick and stitch so that you can print a design and put it onto your towel. And these are great uh, colors, you know, for spring, even into the holidays. So you can get started even earlier on your Christmas in July, if you would like. <laughs> Whoops. Ooh. Okay. Didn't want to lose things. So another great kit that you can grab. I love getting a kit that has everything that I need to get started from A to Z on the project. It just makes everything so much easier, especially now when we can't go to multiple stores to grab our supplies, you know, without a lot of hassle at least. So makes it really, really nice. All right. So while we're talking about the middle of the roadster, um, this is, you know, somebody who is who is not an expert nor a beginner, right? So most of us fit into this middle of the roadster category, if you will. Um, I want to recommend these great embroidery workshops that Sulky has on yet another education platform. Now, these were in partnership with Sew Daily. So on the Sew Daily site, you will find our Embroidery Zen workshops. And these are more intensive than what you would find in one of our free webinars, okay? These are very, very comprehensive uh, courses with some of the best of the best in the industry. So this course is going to be going on during the month of February, and you will find all the information that you need for it in our blog post that I uh, linked to in the description of today's post. So if you're interested in really expanding your skills and learning lots and lots more about working with different stabilizers, learning new techniques, understanding what is free uh, standing lace versus a freestanding embroidery. Um, you know, all these technical terms and products that make uh, things really, really easy for you. You will enjoy taking this class in particular. So this is Embroidery Zen 1 Lite, okay? <laughs> and again, I link to it in the description of the post. So I think you all will really enjoy that. Okay. So let's get into a little bit more of the advanced topics. But before we do that, I'm going to address some of the questions. Um, Wendy is asking, please post the Sew Daily website. Again, if you head on over to the Sulky blog, all the information for that course I just talked about is in the blog post with links to go sign up. Um, so never fear, you're taken care of. Oh, great. Our friends at Sulky have posted the uh, website. Fantastic. Okay, Sandra says, I thought I was an expert, but I'm really a middle of the road. Glad for your info. Yeah, you know, just when I think I may have mastered something, there is something else to learn, which is one of the reasons I love sewing, embroidery, quilting, all of the crafts. Um, I, I've always equated it to learning an, an instrument. And in particular, I read an article once about Eric Clapton and people were calling him a master. I mean, obviously he's a master guitar player. 
And he said, no, 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 I'm still learning. There is always something new to learn. So I, I'm never going to fully master it. And that just really hit home for me, you know? That is when you know that something is your passion. When you understand that you're never going to be the best at this. You may be pretty darn good, but there is always something new to learn. And that is what is really exciting to me about crafting and sewing and quilting and working with these people who they come up with new ideas to do something that is really tried and true. Um, and that's what really gets my creative juices flowing. Okay, let's make sure we're addressing some more. Oh, Mary is talking about the snap spools. She says, what is the secret to getting the snap tops open without snapping the tops off completely. So I definitely have snapped the top off of a spool of thread in my day. So the secret is really just to be careful with it. That's probably not what you wanna hear. I wish there was an actual secret. Um, what I find is if I snap kind of one side off first and then the other side, that kind of ensures the top isn't going to snap off completely. Um, I'm kind of wiggling it back and forth like that. One side, then the next. Maybe I can show it better like this. One side and then the next. That um, is pretty much going to ensure that the top doesn't snap off. So just don't have a heavy hand with it. Um, and hopefully your snap tops will stay on. Now, the great thing is, if one side snaps off, you still have your other side. So you still have your other side that you can keep your thread end nice and neat and tidy. Um, so, yes, I have been known to do that as well. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay. Donna says she didn't realize they opened. I know, I'm telling you, every time I show that to someone, they are in awe about how they can store their thread much easier. So, okay, I just wanna make sure that I am addressing most of the questions. If I miss your question, please, please, email us at info at sulky.com. We are always here to answer your questions and we wanna make sure you're having the best experience possible with our products and just with sewing and crafting in general. So be sure to reach out to us, especially if you don't get your question answered here live. I also do go back and try to answer the questions, um, but a lot of the times there's tons and tons to sift through, so I still might miss something. All right. Someone was asking, and I, I seem to have lost it in the feed here, but someone um, was asking, asking, oh my gosh, I've completely lost it now. Bear with me here. Oh, Suzanne was asking, how do you tell what weight thread uh, the design is for? So for machine embroidery. So, you know, you really have to read the description of the design. And for the most part, if it does not say that a specialty weight is required for the design, then you can pretty safely assume it was digitized for 40 weight thread. That's really like a standard machine embroidery thread. You can also always reach out to that digitizer. There's probably a live chat button or an email of some kind and you could say, hey, is this safe for 40 weight thread? They'll probably get back to you right away uh, with a yes or a no. But for the most part, if the design doesn't say, oh, this is digitized for 30 weight or 12 weight or something heavier than 40, then, you know, I mean, err on the side of caution, but I would say for the most part, that design is suitable for 40 weight. That is like the standard baseline. Um, so unless the description says something different than that, um, also it's almost always, I would say in my experience, always, listed on the thread chart for the design. So when you grab a machine embroidery design, it will come with a 
thread chart. Sometimes it's called a thread chart, sometimes it's called a color chart, sometimes it's called a color sequence chart. This is the PDF that accompanies the design that tells you what thread type, weight, and color to use for each color stop in your machine embroidery design file. Sometimes that PDF is available before you purchase the design. So you can check it out and see if you have those threads, if you need to buy different thread colors, if it's the correct weight for what you have on hand, and then if it's not, you can go and grab those from sulky.com and make sure that you have everything that you need for that embroidery design. So if the design that you're purchasing does not have that available to you prior to purchasing, you can probably ask for it. Say, can I see the seller color sequence chart so that I know if I need to purchase more thread or a different weight? Um, just reach out to them um, and you know, you'll get the information that you need. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to, let's see, what am I going back to? We're gonna start talking about the more advanced embroiderer. Now, don't fear, if you are a beginner, some of this stuff, um, you're gonna say, hey, I can do that too. And most certainly, you definitely can. Honestly, you know, it's it's about confidence, it's about muscle memory, it's about, um, you know, just being willing to tackle something on the little bit more advanced side. So we're not excluding anyone here. Um, we definitely encourage all of you to advance your skills. And if that means, hey, that webinar might be right up my alley, um, maybe it's going to challenge you. And then all of a sudden you could say, hey, I'm an I've done it aller or something like that. I know I'm so cheesy. Okay. <laughs> so this is another free webinar that we have on our education platform. It is called Blooming Espadrilles. Now for this webinar, we made our own shoes. I know. And I made a version using handwork and I made a version using machine embroidery designs. So you can embellish the shoes however you like, but the designs that came with this kit were specifically sized for the top of that shoe. That is all handwork that you see right there. Now it's actually a cross stitch design, but what's interesting is I printed the cross stitch design onto the sulky stick and stitch, and then I placed that onto the canvas fabric and I did my cross stitch through all layers. That way, it's kind of like a cheater cross stitch method. I didn't have to count. I didn't have to do traditional counted cross stitch. I really just, I printed my pattern in color. I followed the color. I did all of my crosses and I ended up with a beautiful design. So grab this free webcast on the Sulky Education platform and Woo, I keep losing things. Sorry, everyone. Steady, okay? <laughs> and you can create your own shoes. So here they are in person. I absolutely love them. And I'm so happy that I have two versions because, you know, these have actually made really great house shoes. Even though they're so pretty, you've got to wear them outside as well. And they do hold up to the weather. Um, or to the elements. Uh, I wouldn't go wearing them in the rain or the snow, obviously, but as we embark on spring, these are great to have on hand and, you know, show off your handiwork. I mean, so many stitches. You can really see all the crosses that I did in all these threads. And I actually used two strands of the Sulky Cotton Petites for the cross stitches, and that's why they are so dense on the shoe. But you could certainly use one strand and do all of your crosses, and they wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be as pronounced. But for something like a shoe, I really wanted just more coverage, I guess, um, on them, so I think it turned out really cool. But anyway, you can grab that free webcast, you can watch the shoes come together, you can get the cross stitch, the cheater cross stitch method, as well as the machine embroidery design method. Um, and 
understand how that all comes together. So some more great free education at your fingertips at sewingonline.sulky.com. Okay, Sandra has a great question. She says, I want to try a combination of hand and machine embroidery. Which technique should be done first? So, do you mean which technique should you learn first, or you want to combine these two techniques into one project? I'm not sure. And you know what? I don't think it matters. Whichever one is speaking to you today, start there. Um, you know, hand embroidery is a great technique for beginners to learn, people who have never even sewn on a sewing machine, because it allows them to understand how a stitch is formed, right? You need your top thread and you need your back thread that supports that top thread. So you kind of get this understanding of how a sewing machine works, essentially. So it is a great gateway um, into more advanced sewing techniques. Um, and it's also a very zen-like craft. So if you want to just chill out on the couch and do a design rather than sitting at your machine and having all of your setup done and ready, um, you know, plus you don't have to invest in a sewing machine if you start off with handwork. So, you know, the other thing is if you are already a, an established sewer and you have embroidery machine equipment at your disposal that you just have never learned, break it out, like I said, get it going. There is no time like the present then, you know, to, to dive in and to practice, you know, while we are social distancing, <laughs> yet again, um, or still. <laughs> um, so anyways, I hope I answered your question. Um, back to the handwork, maybe more advanced people. Now, we have a brand new product at sulky.com. They are so adorable. Look at these. This is called a needle minder. I don't know if you have heard of this, but it's basically like a little magnet that you put on the top of your work and then the other magnet goes on the back of your work to hold it in place. You can use these for hand sewing. You can use these for other projects too. If you have a sew on the go kit um, or something like that, or even if you want to keep the magnet in your sewing kit and have needles and pins on it, um, you can do that even if you, know, you only sew by machine. But needle minders are great for in-progress things. If you like to do hand quilting, the magnet is strong enough that it will go through the quilt. So you can kind of use the needle minder as your placeholder as well. If you've done a bunch of hand sewing and you're gonna stop for the night, maybe come back a couple days later, put your needle minder right there in the spot where you stopped and put your needle on it. The needle is going to stick to that magnet and then you will know really easily where you left off. So they have multiple uses and plus, they're adorable. So I'm gonna show you just some of the ones that we have right now at sulky.com. This is of course the tomato pin cushion, super cute. This is another little springy design with the little galoshes or wellies and the umbrella, so cute. These were designed by Flamingo Toes um, and I'm just so happy that we were able to get these designs at sulky.com. This is one of my personal favorites <laughs> because I really love any sewing machine motif little tchotchke. It is like my passion to seek these out. Um, I have, I could probably fill a closet with all the little sewing machine things that I have. Um, but I particularly love this one and it would be great for a quilter, like I said, to keep your place if you are hand quilting or even machine quilting and you wanna kind of remember where you left off without getting your magnifying glass out. <laughs> so really, really cute. This one, little bicycle. So they're kind of springy designs, um, but you know, so cute for any time of year. And then, the hedgehog. I mean, adorable. 
I absolutely love it. You might even wanna keep that on your finished work when you're displaying it because it just adds a little level of cuteness to the design. And finally, we have the little cute flamingo. I mean, these are adorable. These would make great gifts for Valentine's Day for your sewing friends. Um, and they just, like I said, add a little bit of joy to your crafty process. You know, who doesn't want a cute little notion? You know, I mean, it's helpful and adorable. So I wanted to show you all these because they're brand new at sulky.com and they kind of fit in with, you know, if you're advanced um, in your hand embroidery or cross stitch handwork techniques, um, a needle minder might just be the thing you need to kind of uh, propel your crafty endeavors, okay? <laughs> All right, so cute. Love it. So now that we've talked about a little bit more advanced hand embroidery or handwork, um, and I do want to say, you know, I didn't really consider myself an advanced handwork person when I made these shoes. But after making them, I felt like I could tackle anything. I mean, these were truly a labor of love in that they took a long time. You know, handwork is n not for the instant gratification uh, lover, okay? Handwork, you really need some patience and you need to know that it's going to take a while. Um, I can't really tell you how many hours those shoes took me, but let's just say they were a labor of love. So again, you know, that was what I recommended for the sort of I've done it aller. Um, but like I said, if you're a beginner, you can certainly tackle that. It's really just your muscle, muscle memory. And what's great is it's just a series of cross stitches. So you're really perfecting that one stitch and you can apply that to other handwork, you know, patterns, things that you're working on. Okay, so let's say you are the machine embroidery expert or you're on your way to expert status. Um, what I am recommending for you is to make sure that your thread is fully stocked. And again, no time than like the present to stock up on those rayon threads while they are 25% off. And our embroiderer's dream package is also on sale. You're gonna save about a hundred bucks on this slimline storage box that is full of sulky rayon threads. Now, like I said, there is nothing more irritating <laughs> than getting to a portion of your machine embroidery design and you're out of the next color. So the great thing about a storage box like this is it also comes with stickers that you can put on these little, on the little uh, divider areas that have the thread color number on them. So when you do run out of a spool, you can open up your slimline box like so and say, okay, this is the number of the color that I'm out of and then you can order that color. So why not start off with a dream package, even if you have spools in various places around your house or your sewing room. Um, I just got a cute little cake stand and <laughs> started putting the spools on there that are in use on the project I'm working on at the moment. And then I move them back to the slim line, put them where they go. Um, and then I can start a new project with a new set. So that's what I'm hoping to keep going. Maybe that's my New Year's resolution um, is to keep all of that a little bit more organized. But a slimline box really allows you to do that. And it opens up completely flat as well. You can also take the two sides apart really easily and hang them on a hook in your sewing room so that they're open for you. And then maybe when you're done with your project or your sewing session for that day, just close it back up, keeping it free of lint and dust and things like that. So these are really, really great and definitely re-up on your thread stash um, so that you are ready to tackle any project. You know, whether you're a beginner, honestly, or advanced, it's really great to have an array of colors on hand for uh, machine embroidery work. 
And just as you need a bunch of thread, you need some basic stabilizers. This is our stabilizer essentials pack, and it comes with a variety of stabilizer types. I always recommend from the beginner to the middle of the roadster to the I've done it aller, have some different stabilizer types on hand so that you are ready to tackle any project that you want to do. Um, from Solvi to Soft and Shear, which is a fusible lightweight stabilizer, to some different tearaway varieties. The Sticky Plus is really an essential when you are embroidering hard to hoop things. Now, at the beginning of our episode today, a number of people were asking about embroidery on felt, embroidery on fleece. Now, these are loftier fabrics that are hard to secure in the hoop, or they could be damaged by the hooping process. So you want to use Sulky Sticky Plus in the hoop and only hoop the stabilizer. Then you score the paper backing within your inner hoop ring, peel it away, and it reveals a sticky surface that you will put your felt or your fleece or your hard to hoop item onto. That secures it in the hoop without it needing to actually be hooped. So we call that technique hoopless embroidery. And that sticky plus is really, really essential for that technique because it already has that sticky backing on it. So this is a really great pack of essential stabilizers to have on hand, either to restock your sewing room and be ready for everything that National Embroidery Month is going to, uh, you know, hand you <laughs> during February. So we will be talking about so many embroidery projects and new products and fun things on the horizon, starting with our Keepsake Key Fob webinar that is next week. Now, on last week's Facebook Live, I made the mistake of saying it was next week, meaning today. So I'm very sorry. I have no idea what day it is sometimes. <laughs> and that was my mistake. It's actually next week, February 9th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Our special guest is Julie Treeb from Designs by Juju. I know. I'm so excited. She is fantastic. She's never done anything like this before, so we consider ourselves very, very lucky to have her on hand in the flesh, live for our free webcast. So next week, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, it is at sewingonline.sulky.com. It will not be here on Facebook. So just so you know, our Facebook Lives are completely different from our webinars and webcasts. All right. So you'll need to register at sewingonline.sulky.com. You will find our Keepsake Key Fobs webcast with Julie from Designs by Juju. Sign up, grab yourself a kit. We will be making these awesome key fobs. Um, I thought I had a photo of them here. Let me see if I can bring one on real fast to share with you. And you can see just how cute they are. Here we go. Here we go. So our key fobs, um, you'll get the designs for the key fobs and this exclusive monogram that Julie designed specifically for us. You get those with purchase of the kit. And with the kit, you get sparkly vinyl and these cute little heart snaps and the little uh, D-ring clips that you need. So, you know, you could put these on a number of different things. They make great little gifts. Um, and then also, when you register for the webcast, uh, Julie has graciously uh, offered a free freestanding lace heart design for anybody who registers. So they do freestanding lace now at Designs by Juju, and these hearts are really, really pretty. They are made of all thread. You stitch them out onto Sulky uh, Fabrisolvi, which is a fabric-like water-soluble stabilizer. It's really great because it supports all those stitches in the hoop, and then it washes away completely. So you're left with a really lacy thread work heart design. 
So anybody who registers can get that design for free. And if you register today, you can head on over to your product page in your library at sewingonline.sulky.com and grab the design right now and start stitching out hearts. And uh, those will make great little gifts. You can turn them into ornaments or gift tags, things like that for Valentine's Day. So I hope to see you all at the webcast next week. It will be following our Facebook Live. So I will still be here joining you live on Facebook then we will head on over to the webcast platform and we will meet Julie over there for a great, great free tutorial on the in the hoop key fobs. So again, if you're new to machine embroidery, join us. You will learn all about an in the hoop design. You will learn about the importance of using software to expand your machine embroidery capabilities. Um, we're just going to learn a, a lot, a lot of stuff from Julie. Um, she's just really, really great teacher. She's very um, casual, non-threatening, easygoing. You're just going to want to take a lot of classes from her after you see um, this webcast with Sulky. So glad lots of you are planning on attending and have signed up already. So that is great. All right. So thank you all for joining me today. Again, our giveaway today for one lucky person who is commenting, liking, sharing the post today, I will be giving away this great embroiderer's toolkit. And like I said, if you don't have machine embroidery capabilities, this toolkit is also great for just a standard sewing machine. Um, it is like a small little screwdriver set with different... Um, with different attachments to get into the nooks and crannies of your sewing machine, replace your needle, replace your presser foot, um, remove your throat plate so you can get in there and dust um, all of your little uh, lint and fibers out of your machine and get it in tip top shape so that it is ready for all things embroidery this month as we dive into National Embroidery Month. So that is a giveaway today. You can also find this toolkit at sulky.com. It's a great little thing to have on hand. Comes in the cute little pouch. So that is our giveaway. Also, don't forget about the sale right now, National Embroidery Month. I mean, great, great deals. Like I said, if you grab that dream assortment of threads, you're gonna save almost a hundred bucks on all that thread. So it's a great time to stock your sewing room with all things embroidery so that you're ready to go for everything we're going to unveil this month. Grab those metallic threads um, because it doesn't get more fun than adding metallic to your embroideries as well. And select stabilizers. So all of those favorites, those essentials, now is the time to grab those up. Um, and for all of you hand workers out there, we will be bringing you lots of great designs and ideas for dressing up your closet, your home decor, all types of things. So stay with us for the month of February as we uh, really, really concentrate on machine and hand embroidery. I hope you all enjoyed today. I enjoyed being with you so much. Um, I really love our Facebook Lives where we can connect and come together. So uh, again, join us for the webcast next week. And um, I'll see you next time.